Welcome back design and analysis students. Today we're going to be looking at how to compute a variable in SPSS where you want to get the sum or average for a batch of items into a total score. In this particular example, we are going to look at one of the survey measures we're using in design and analysis two called the PANIS, the positive and affect negative affect schedule. What this measure does, as you can see here on the screen, is have a bunch of items that people rate the degree to which they're feeling that um, in general, where very slightly or not at all is a one and extremely is a five. And so maybe we are interested in how excited that person is in general, but maybe we're interested in looking across the 10 items to see how often they experience a variety of positive emotions. And we could combine all 10 of those items into one positive affect scale. So I'm going to show you with SPSS how you can do a sum or average to take a collection of items and add them together into that scale score, sometimes called a subscale. In SPSS, the PANIS items for the data file we're using are down here in the middle of the data set. Up at the top, we've got the summary score for um, all of the PANIS items together the positive affect subscale, the 10 items that tap into positive emotions, and the negative affect subscale, the 10 items that um, add together for a negative emotion scale. But to get to that score in our data set, we need to look at the original items. And in this case, we could look at the particular items and find all the positive ones, interested, excited, strong, enthusiastic, proud, alert, inspired, determined, attentive, and active to make that 10 item scale into that affect subscale or total. We do this by going to transform and compute and we tell it we're going to call this um, a new variable. So let's call it positive just so you can see how it's different in the data set. We then can use all these functions over here to do quite a variety of mathematical things. In this case, we're interested first in doing the sum of all the particular items. So I'm going to look at all the possibilities and scroll down alphabetically until I get to sum. Right? It explains what the sum is, so you can make sure that's what you want to use. The sum is the total. And I use the arrow here to put it up here. And SPSS is showing me you want to do the sum of what? Question mark, next one, question mark. And so we're going to put each of those PANIS items in here where the question marks are that are positive in nature. So first off, interested will work. I put that in. And then a comma. And the next one, excited, put that in. And then a comma. It's really important not to have spaces. That means something different in computer language than it does to humans. So no spaces in between the items. So we put in strong, comma, enthusiastic, comma, Proud, alert, inspired, determined, attentive, active. I think we've got them all. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's going to create a sum for all of those 10 items. Now we can do one of two things with this formula. We can click paste, and then it will bring up a syntax file, the computer language that runs behind what you're doing in SPSS to tell it what to do. And it says, from this data set, compute a variable named positive that sums all these things, period, and execute. Execute is make it happen. If you're a Star Trek Next Generation fan from the 90s, their captain always said, make it so when it was time to go. So if we put it into a syntax file, we could save this. And then if we added people to our data set later, we could just run it again and it would do the score for everybody all together. So this is very beneficial to save you time from hand calculations where you might make errors um, and also to do it more time efficient. In syntax, once I've got it written, I can click the green arrow and it'll run what I've put here. Then I could save this so I don't have to create it again. So if I push run, right, it shows me in the output that it did it, it executed it, but I don't see anything here because the change was made in the data set. 
So way down at the end of the data set is going to be the summary for um, the different variable. Okay, and let's see where it's stuck positive. Nope, I'm not seeing it at the end, so I'm gonna run it again real quick. See if it maybe stuck it somewhere else. So we'll go back to transform and compute. And this time I'll click OK. All right, and see if it stuck it in the folder. I think I know the mistake I made last time too from the syntax, and I'll show you that in a minute. But to show you now, it calculated that variable at the end of our data set and it added all 10 of those positive items together. When I was in the syntax file, what I need to do is to make sure I've highlighted the section and then click the green arrow, and it will do the same thing in the data set. So there I just ran it twice. It's going to copy it over top of each other. The second thing you might want to do, instead of doing the sum for a scale, is to take the average of the items. This is beneficial if somebody skipped an item because you can still get a total score. For the individuals where um, they've skipped a score before, doing the sum will underestimate because it will maybe have a couple blank spaces and not make their total look as high as it could be. So personally, I often, um, <laughs> personally, my goodness, prefer to do the average instead of the sum of items. So that if somebody skips one, I still get a good estimate of what they did on that whole variable without missing their score. So we can also go to compute variable, and instead of sum, type in average. If you look at your list of possible things down here of all the stuff you can do, um, we want our average in there, and SPSS likes to do that with mean instead of the word average. So I put in mean, which is the average, and now it's going to take um, the mean of all those things. So let's call this one mean pause. Or positive. Okay. Again, I can click paste and it'll put that new command into my output file and I can highlight it and use the green arrow to run it from here. Or I do run, either of those will work. And it will create the new variable where I've got the mean of those items instead of the sum of those items. Again, shows up at the end of the data set. So we had 10 items, we divide it by 10 to get the mean and you can see these mostly match up and again, it would be a little bit different if somebody had skipped an item here. This might be a little bit lower than their mean score if they had been missing something. So we've looked at how to um, make scale scores or subscale scores from a variety of items into something a little bit bigger, which often has some more reliability to it than just asking a single item or those things by themselves. There may also be cases where you combine reverse scoring items before you can do the sum score. So for example, in the Wildcat items we've been using in research design and analysis too, some of those items are part of a scale, but some of them are positively worded and others are negatively worded. And what we need to do is flip some of those items around so they're all scored in the same way, that a five is always a higher or better score. So we might have to reverse code a few items before we add them all together into the scale score so that we are sure that someone with a higher score is feeling better or doing better in that part of adjustment. If you need to reverse it, revisit about how to reverse score items, please see my other video segment on reverse scoring. You could use that in combination with the summer average again to take items, line them up, let's see, this way, and then squish them all together into a total score or a total average. Thank you.